Hello. Uh, very nice to see you. Uh, if there are people online, hi, and hi to everyone in the room. Um, my name's Lucy. I'm the Chief Exec of Wikimedia UK. Um, I am a native English speaker and I can start to talk quite quickly. Please just shout at me to slow down if that's an issue. So please don't, um, uh, don't stand on ceremony, just say slow down please. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about Wikimedia UK's first Wikimedia in Residence which is focused on the climate crisis. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit about Wikimedia UK because I don't expect you to necessarily know much about us beyond the fact that we're the UK chapter for Wikimedia. Um, and I'm going to try and do this slight awkward thing of both moving forward on the slides here and on my laptop, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but I just wanted to say that whilst Wikimedia UK obviously is inspired by the idea that everyone in the world accesses the sum of all knowledge, uh, we are a, a separate registered charity in the UK. We have our own board and our own strategy and our own vision and mission, so this is our vision. Um, and our our mission, which I'm going to read out, um, is to enable people to engage with open knowledge and access reliable information in order to develop their understanding of the world and make informed decisions about issues that affect them. And I think that mission is particularly important and relevant when it comes to our work on uh, climate breakdown. Quick facts about us, we've got 16 staff currently based across the UK, I personally live in Scotland. Um, we've got a really diverse uh, board of trustees, 11 trustees, and unusually within the Wikimedia movement, our governance model is such that actually very few of our trustees come from the movement, so it's quite an interesting, I think, interesting model for the movement. And we, we obviously work with lots of volunteers and we define community leaders as those lead volunteers that make things happen that wouldn't otherwise. So they might be delivering training for us or giving a talk or running a project. Um, and we have hundreds of community leaders who work for us, but for about the last, for the last five years, around half of those have been women. And that's a really important part of our program. Um, and we are trying to diversify that community in, in many other ways, but um, I feel like we've, we've done quite good work on gender. And we, I'd say that our program is probably characterized by really, quite major partnerships with big, world-renowned cultural and educational institutions. And there's, I often talk about that work, but today I'm talking about, see, I told you I'd get out of sync. Um, oh, no, hang on. Oh, oh, doesn't go back. There we go. Um, and then really quickly, impact and reach. Um, I won't talk through this, but this is just a few uh, metrics from the work that we, that we do. But this last one's quite important because we're working with content holding organizations and Whilst this is a whole separate conversation, often those organisations hold content about the world, not just about the UK. Um, so, you know, it's really important to us that, that, that that's released online openly. Um, and in the year 2021-22, there were 15 billion views of those images. But climate, right? Like, that's why we're here. Um, so we have, we have three strategic themes at Wikimedia UK and climate and environment is a new one for us. We introduced it in 2022. Um, it sits alongside knowledge, equity and information literacy. Um, but it recognises the accelerating climate crisis and Wikimedia's really vital role in providing um, unbiased, up-to-date information about the impact of climate breakdown, um, but also potential actions and mitigations. Um, and one of the reasons that we identified this as a strategic theme, um, and I mean this with absolutely no um, diminishment of the incredible uh, work that volunteers have done on, on the wiki, but the climate coverage on Wikimedia could be better. It's a small editing community. Um, it's generally been um, it's quite focused on Europe and, and uh, North America. Um, whereas, as we know, actually the global majority are, are currently um, the people experiencing the, the sharp end a sticky end of climate change. Um, uh, mis mis and disinformation is a concern, and I've said here on non-English wikis, but I mean, obviously, it's also a concern on English wiki, but that gets a bit, um, with, more, with more users, with more readers, um, I think that might get picked up more quickly. Um, there's an issue with greenwashing. I've got quite an interesting example about that, but I won't go into that now in terms of time. Um, but that's compounded by a lack of open data from climate NGOs. I don't know if any of you were in the session and uh, a couple of rooms down from Creative Commons, um, but their open climate, what's it called, open climate campaign work is really important in this area to try and get content holding organisations to release, to release their data. Um, so we were super excited. I've just noticed that it's there. Oh my goodness. 
Sorry, I just noticed that they put the slides there too. It's like super exciting. Um, so we were we were really um, really excited to launch a uh, Wikimedia in Residence at the Global Systems Institute at the University of Exeter, um, and we launched that last October. When I say launch, I mean that's the point when the member of staff started. Um, there were several years of work <laughs> running up to that, and very happy to talk about that um, if anyone has any questions around how we established that partnership. But just in brief, that came about um, firstly very much due to the work and the connections of that small editing community that I mentioned, um, but also the support of the Global Systems Institute and their vision and their understanding of how working with Wikimedia could, could help them and help get their research and their, um, their messages out there. Um, but also we were really fortunate to receive funding from an external foundation um, and they funded one year of the project but we I think literally in the last two days sent off all our, our, our proposals for a second year of funding um, with the idea that would expand into the Spanish Wikipedia alongside English Wiki um, in this in the second year um, and I'm not going to read this out, but this is what the Global Systems Institute says about themselves. They are a world-leading institute uh, working on, on climate, so it's an important strategic partner for us. Um, and many of you will be familiar with the Wikimedia in a Residence model. In the UK, um, we've got a really strong track record in residencies, and we try and make sure that everyone is completely bespoke and responds to the objectives of the host organisation and also our own strategic themes. Um, and the, the resident has been undertaking a real mixture of these activities. Um, internal advocacy within an institution is always just the first port of call and the first thing that you need to do to try and establish relationships and connections and actually make change happen. Um, but in terms of uh, activities, there's also you know, events and training, student engagement, expert outreach, um, trying to encourage experts within the Institute to review articles and actually uh, you know, inform us from their expert perspective of what needs changing. Um, external advocacy, uh, often with institutions that I mentioned who are holding data that could be relevant or visuals or you know, um, various things. Um, Partnerships, content releases, improving imagery. Um, and I'm going to give um, just a few examples of that work. Uh, we, I'm going to sort of, oops, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll back to the movement strategy 2030 that many of you will be familiar with. And there's this, uh, an initiative around topics for impact, which we're really interested in. But um, I think it's fair to say that the topics for impact was, is not, entirely well defined or articulated within the strategy and actually this project has been really enabling us to think about what that means um, and how we prioritize in the sea of, of climate articles how we prioritize which ones should be should be changed and yes it's about higher page views but it's not just about that it's also um, ones where the editing community have identified missing information where it might be an article about something that doesn't make an explicit link to climate this climate crisis, but there should be. Um, so that, that work's been, been really interesting for us. Um, and then this is like a super concrete example that I just thought I'd share. It's a screenshot from an edit that was made during one of our editathons. So this, the article on coral reef on Wikipedia um, basically said that the coral reef isn't threatened by ocean acidification. Um, and that's just not true. So you can see here how that's been changed through one of our editathons. And there's quite a few examples of, of that, um, which is, um, I think, you know, incredibly important. We need people to come to Wikipedia and know that if they're looking at climate information, whether that's to inform their own, the way they live their own life, or whether that's as a researcher um, or a broadcaster, that they're getting the right information. Um, and also we've been trying to encourage the coverage of key concepts and making those really clear for people. Um, so an, another example is um, carbon neutral and net zero, certainly in the UK, um, can just sometimes be used interchangeably, but they're quite different concepts. So we've worked with an external organisation to develop those articles and distinguish them, enabling people and particularly organisations and businesses to understand the different strategies, the different potential impacts, um, and intersect goals related to climate change that are actually meaningful within their context. Um, and you know, more broadly, this this fits with our 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 um, theses that you know clear information really helps to ensure that actions are based on a real understanding of different strategies and their impacts. 
external advocacy has taken different forms, but this is just an example where Tatiana, who is the, um, this is a picture of Tatiana Bellata. She is the Wikimedia Visiting Fellow. She was hoping to do the presentation with me. Um, she didn't manage to get here in person and we just decided, um, I mean, not least because of the time difference that I, that I, would, that I would give this. Um, so Tatiana is a South African science communicator and um, uh, she's now based in, well, she's working in Exeter, which is in the Southwest of England. Um, and uh, one of the pieces of work that she's doing is encouraging researchers to, to really understand the impact and value of working with Wikimedia. Um, and in particular, thinking about the state of global tipping points report, which will be launched at COP28 later this year, um, and how we make sure that that is um, shared openly. And partnership working underpins everything we do. Clearly, it's a partnership with the Global Systems Institute, but this is one example of working with other partners across and beyond the movement. So working with Wikimedia New York City, Earth Alliance, and the Influencer Depths of Wikipedia, who apparently has 1.2 million followers, followers which is incredible. Um, and we organized a climate change editathon in New York. And the thing I love about the themes here are, um, you know, it's about how you live, how you eat, how you move, all these things that really bring it home to us how our own, um, uh, our, we are all in relation to the climate. Um, and, you know, sometimes I think it really helps to bring it to that level, that human level, rather than necessarily looking at the big statistics and the scary stuff um, about climate breakdown. But this is a great event and improved, saw improvements to various articles. As an example, um, the impact of flying first or business class. I'm sure none of you did over here. I certainly didn't, never have. Um, but there's a big difference between flying economy and, and flying in, in one of the fancy seats or fancy beds rather. Um, so just a quick snapshot of some of our key achievements, but I wanted to start with the uh, looking at the detail of what we're doing, because obviously that underpins these statistics um, and that, that the sort of detailed one-to-one -one work that goes into training editors, into getting people on the side, into motivating people to want to change Wikipedia and the information that, that millions of people are accessing. Uh, really quickly about challenges. See, I put this in red, like, ah, da, 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 da. Um, So securing a work visa for Tatiana was, was a bit of a nightmare. Um, it, well, it amazes you to know that basically the UK doesn't want people to come to it, so it took about six months. Um, but it's great that she's now in Exeter. Um, academic timetables, I'm sure many of you working uh, with higher education have come across this, that there are particular cycles. Um, but certainly within the UK and probably in other areas, there have been ongoing strikes around conditions um, and terms, and that's really affected our programmes right across um, our, the, whole, the whole team, um, and not just in terms of this project. And I think that has compounded the challenges of trying to secure expert input. Um, retaining interest in editathons, is, is that starting to diminish and clear we, clearly we need to find new ways of engaging people and new communities um, to do so. Um, and uh, there's a lack of metrics for, for the quality of edits. I mean, you, this, these are not things that will be new to this project or to you, but it's just sort of synthesizing some of the challenges of this particular programme. So I mentioned the next steps, we are hopefully, fingers crossed, securing a second year of funding um, and expanding the work to the Spanish Wikipedia. Um, we will work across other language Wikipedias as well. Um, and, uh, you know, for sure that's really important. But uh, the, the, the starting point has been working on English Wikipedia. Um, but we, we really see this as expanding into, into different languages. Um, and I think that's my last slide, apart from this beautiful orchid. I'd recommend going to the National Orchid Garden in the Botanic Garden while you're here if you get a chance. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Um, if any of you have any questions or comments or things to share, then please do go ahead. And Tom, I think you're supposed to use the mic, yeah. Thank you so much, really interesting presentation. Uh, I wanted to take a step back and ask you to tell a bit more about why d did you decide, did Wikimedia UK decide to choose climate yeah. uh, as one of its strategic priorities in the first place? And what do you think makes Wikimedia UK specifically uh, best suited to, uh, to address this topic? Yeah, uh, really good questions. Um, so the first one, I guess it's, 
I felt really personally that we are living through, you know, a massive existential crisis. Um, and I really wanted to be helping to, um, in a tiny way, right, but address that crisis through the work that, that I'm doing and that my team's doing. Um, and other people on the staff team felt the same. Um, and, you know, it did involve quite a lot of conversations with our board because it, it was a bit of a departure from this focus on knowledge equity and information literacy. Um, but it just felt like as, as an organisation trying to enable people to access information that makes a difference to their lives, if we weren't working on climate, then what were we doing? I felt really strongly about it. So I, I guess I, I sort of spearheaded that in terms of our strategy and, and, and hopefully brought other people alongside. Um, I guess, you know, I, 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 I'm passionate about information, but not just about information being out there but like actually how that affects people and what that enables what change that enables in people's lives so it felt like an obvious fit um, i don't think that the uk is best place to do it i just think that we are an organization that could support this work um, i haven't shared with you our strategic objectives around climate because i thought that would be a bit boring but you know it's really the way we've articulated it has tried to be really sensitive to the fact that well a lots of this work's going on already and b Whilst the UK obviously is experiencing changes in climate, you know, we're not at the sharp end in terms of this stuff. So um, sort of addressing climate justice, um, how the intersection of knowledge equity and climate change and the climate crisis is really important. Um, and, you know, and I hope that that is, I believe that that is informing our approach through this residency, but through the other partnerships that we're delivering. But just to be clear, like, I don't think the UK is best placed um, I think we felt passionately about it and we felt that we're a pretty well resourced organisation within the movement and if we can add some support to what had been and still is to a degree a small, incredibly committed but a small um, editing community working on climate. Um, yes, thank you. Hello, you mentioned that um, researcher and expert availability and interest was one of the challenges. Yeah. As a researcher myself, <laughs> I would like to know, I guess I have a three-part question. In your ideal world, how would researchers be more involved in your project? What are the barriers that you see for more researchers getting involved? And what are you doing to sort of reach out to researchers? Yeah, I will try to answer that. The caveat is that I'm not delivering this project, um, so I won't have the most comprehensive knowledge of the different tactics that are being used. Um, so in terms of what we're trying to do, um, one of the, the things that we're trying to do is get, um, is get expert input into articles. And there are different mechanisms for that expert review. Um, you know, in a, I guess in an ideal world, we train, we train um, you know, some of these uh, senior academics at the Institute and they edit Wikipedia themselves, but we don't insist on that. Um, you know, there are ways of ingesting their, their review into, into Wikipedia through editathons where volunteers can make those changes. Um, in some cases, they're literally just marking up a word page and we get them to sign a license agreement. So we're, we're trying to make it work for them. Um, but, I, you know, in terms of the availability, I really think it's just about the sheer workload and capacity of most academics. And I happen to have a meeting with someone else at the University of Exeter about a totally different project, an AI project. And, um, and he, but he's, I know, I happen to know that Tatiana had emailed him. And, and so it came up in this conversation and I wasn't putting him on the spot, but it's that thing where, oh, oh yeah, oh, that does ring a bell. You know, there's just a massive workload. So I, we've got to acknowledge that. Um, and then uh, additionally, you know, apart from the sort of expert review, there's also, if people are working on research um, related to climate, trying to make sure that where they have that power, and I know that researchers don't always, um, but to make it open access, right? Um, so uh, in terms of the barriers, I mean, I think, you know, there's lack of time, lack of understanding of how Wikimedia works, lack of, um, still, in some cases, a lack of credibility and legitimacy. Uh, and then in terms of the tactics, that's really, I guess, Tatiana building those relationships, trying to make the case, delivering editathons, being in Exeter now at the Institute in person, I think will make a difference. And she's, that's only been the case since April. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for the question. Are there any other questions or comments? Hey? I think, yeah, yes. <laughs> 
No, it's all right. No problem. Um, where actually did come the funding from? Mm -hmm. So there's a, um, a foundation uh, working uh, in the area of climate. And what's quite interesting is that usually, so Wikimedia UK gets a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation, um, but that represents about 40% of our income. And, and obviously we're proactively going to grant makers. In this case, there was a real alignment of the stars um, because I've been working with a group of Wikipedians and also the Global Systems Institute to, um, to build the concept for this project. We'd initially gone to a big tech company, which will remain un unmentioned, um, and they, they hadn't, they hadn't um, supported it and we'd been looking at other funding. And then um, this particular funder went to, went to this, approached a Wikipedia editor working in this space and said, I'd really like to do something with Wikipedia. So it was incredibly fortunate. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're really lucky that they've invested in this program and hopefully are going to invest in, in a second year. Um, it's always really, well, I don't, I don't know whether, you, yeah, whether you're working in this area in terms of fundraising, but it's, it's always really difficult. And, uh, but when these, um, a bit of serendipity comes along, <laughs> you don't turn it, you, you don't uh, walk away. Hi, Lucy. Hi. I'm Jonathan for Community Deutschland. Um, hey. I'm also talking about the climate work, and my question is, when you're talking with policy grant or other decision makers, how do you tell them why Wikimedia? Because I'm very interested in this being actionable. Yeah, so uh, just to be clear, you're talking about decision makers within institutions. Which sort of decision makers are you talking about? I was mo mostly focusing on grant and policy decisions. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So um, there's a whole backstory to this, but the short version is that our, our sort of policy our public policy work certainly is, is not around climate, it's around information literacy and um, well, things like the online safety bill and so on. Um, in terms of decision makers with funders, um, honestly, I don't think that I could say we have made a breakthrough in terms of those successful <laughs> arguments. Um, this is something we're, we're trying to learn and we're, we're, we are um, experimenting with different ways, but we were really fortunate in this with this instance, because the funder itself, you know, is focused purely on climate, they understand. Um, and um, uh, what one of the things that this, we had a champion within that funding organization, but we have put together slight, you know, presentations and so on to illustrate how fundamental Wikipedia is to people's access to knowledge and information and how that, that can drive changes in behavior if we're making sure that that is up to date, um, unbiased, doesn't have crap like the fact that the coral reef doesn't mind, you know, the ocean turning acid. Um, so we, in my experience, having, it always helps if you have a champion somewhere, but then, you know, working with that person to think about the best ways of influencing, you know, in this case, his, his seniors who held the, the budget. Not rocket science there, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Hi, thank you for the excellent talk. I okay. really enjoyed it and, and as I've seen some some coincidences with our work. We are a group of users, we are scientists, uh, we, right. we, we work for the academia. Should I go somewhere? Yes. Uh, can you send slide of feedback? Yeah. It's, it's, we can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I sit here. Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, I had a talk two days ago with Andrew Luan or something. He works in, in Canadian and works for Wiki Journal. Um, and I think that one way of, of, of working with the challenge of uh, uh, evaluating the quality of the articles would be perhaps publishing them in, in the Wiki Journal so they are peer reviewed and the scientists that cooperate, or the academics that cooperate, uh, may add to their CV uh, another article. This is a fresh idea to me, and, and, and I am evaluating. What do you think? Would it work for your climate project? I mean, that sounds like a super interesting idea, and I'll take it back to, to the team working on this. Um, I mean, we're, as I mentioned, climate is an emerging theme for us. We are, um, we are, 
this is our first residency for climate, so we're open to new ideas and suggestions and ways of working, for sure, and working across. I mean, I, I've sort of talked about Wikipedia, Wikipedia mainly, but obviously we're also working on Wikidata and Wikicommons, but um, I don't know if we've done anything on Wikijournals, but I'll certainly um, talk about that idea, bring it back. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, Siobhan Leachman just said there's a person online who has a question for you. Oh, and her name's Jan. Their name is Jan. Um, how would you recommend another affiliate to get started copying what you have done? <laughs> um, please copy. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? We're we're an international movement, and we share ideas. Um, so. Uh, you can only get, give so much in a, in a short lecture like this. Um, and I've tried to, I guess, tell a little bit of a story, um, but please reach out to us directly um, and get more, you know, very, very happy to talk to other affiliates who are looking to do something similar. Um, we can, you know, I haven't, what I haven't talked about is the, is the time, is the setting up time and the challenges of that. Um, and the main challenge around it really was getting funding. Um, but equally, there, there are always teething problems at the start of a residency like this and things to work through. And, you know, we'd be very happy. We've, got, we've, we've had to produce a uh, sort of interim report for the funder and very, very happy to share that because it gives a lot more detail than what I've talked about and also to have a, have a, a video call or whatever. So um, I, I don't think I can synthesize my advice, um, really. Um, other than to say, sorry, I think one thing is really important is um, to make sure that you're working in hand in hand with the with the community. Thanks for the question. Was it Jan? Got a minute and a half left if anyone has any final questions or anything to share about what they're doing in terms of climate. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. That was uh, super interesting. Um, something I've found in engaging on kind of academic topics on Wikipedia is, you know, there's a lot of them and and there's a lot of content that's already there that you've, it, it's quite hard to engage with. It's, it's quite hard to sort of address a page that's sort of half good, half bad, how to, how to get people to, to work through that. So I was just wondering how that worked with these projects uh, with this project and also yeah, a bit more about that you know climate must be a massive there must be a massive number of pages that relate to climate mm -hmm. in wikipedia and and was do, do you have any tools for how you've kind of made that selection to narrow things down or do yeah you? so there's sort of two things in that isn't there um so I, I think I think for me the first thing is to not to frame any of this stuff as being academic topics, <laughs> not to um, because I think that's really important. This is this is um, whilst it's informed by academic research, uh, you know, it's really at the forefront of everyone's lives. This you know the 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 crisis, um, and I think that's just sorry. I think that's an important point in terms of framing and the way we've tried to go about it. And actually, I think when we've got people 